Hey gang, we are in Springfield, Missouri today, and we are going to Maple Park Cemetery, which you see here right on the left. We are going back to the Wild West. That's right, 1865. Something very famous happened, and we're going to talk about it. And this is the place. And we are in. Confederate soldier. That's right, gang. We are in Confederate territory today. Well, it used to be, not anymore. But this is the location, well, not at the cemetery here, but at the square where there was a very, very famous gunfight. Definitely the most famous ever. It's kind of what started everything off, the duel. The stare down, fastest draw wins. Not all the time. Not all the time. And we're going to talk about it because one man was left standing and the other man was not. Two men, we all know Wild Bill Hickok, and the other man was Davis Tutt. Now, it's going to be pretty hard for me to tell this story without giving a frame of reference and talking about Wild Bill. But we'll, we'll definitely cover the gunfight, which is the most important part. Now, I'll tell you a little bit about the adversaries. We'll start with Davis Tutt, who was born in Yellville, Arkansas. He was actually the son of a man named Hansford Tut. Hansford was a member of this very politically influential family in Marion County, Arkansas. And when Davis Tut was a boy, his family was involved in this war. It's called the Tut Everett War, kind of similar to the Hatfields and McCoys except you could guess it was more of a political issue influencing this war, but similar to the Hatfields and McCoys, during the war his father was killed, family members were killed, it was a pretty bad deal for, for him to grow up in and experience. But as he got into his elder teens, he enlisted on the side of the Confederates in the second year of the Civil War in 1862. He joined Company A in the 27th Arkansas Infantry Regiment and he fought in the Trans-Mississippi Theater, which is just, it's basically west of the Mississippi River, right in there. And he ended up here in Springfield after the war and serendipity, so would Wild Bill, Wild Bill Hickok. Now they actually, even though they were from opposite sides, they became friends and Davis was 26 years old and Hickok was 28 nearly the same age, he got along pretty good, and it was actually starting, there were some problems that were developing. It is said that Davis Tut's sister was seduced by Wild Bill and maybe made pregnant. Now I'm going to tell you that's probably a rumor, it's probably not true. But no one knows. But what we do know pretty well is that Tut had money problems. He had already been arrested and fined for illegal gambling. 
if you can believe it. I mean, gambling was happening everywhere. And a friend had bailed him out, but he was already penniless, so to speak, and he owed his friend money, and the debts were being called in. So Davis was kind of in a, a little bit of a desperate situation. Now, on July 20th, 1865, there was this card game going on. It was at a hotel called the Lion House. And Hickok was sitting at the table and he won a whole bunch of money. Some say it was about $200. Now, Tut walked in, his buddy, and he said, hey, Bill, good job. Patted him on the back and said, hey, by the way, you got all this cash laying here. How about, how about repaying me for that $40 you owe me for the horse, that horse you bought off me? And while Bill's like, okay. And he paid him, he gave him $40, all good. But then Davis said, well, what about that $35 you owe me from losing in cards the other night? Some say it was 45, 35. It doesn't really matter because Wild Bill said, I only owe you 25. Now, while Bill had his pocket watch laying there on the poker table, laying there with the chips and the cards, and without even asking, Davis reached down and just grabbed it. He snatched it. And he's looking at it, and he's like, hey, this'll do. This'll do for collateral. I'll give this back to you when you give me my money. And Hickok was incensed, as anybody would be. He's like, give me that back. And Davis said, no way. So this was kind of the start of the brew of the trouble. Now, what happened was, it didn't really like end like, end like right that second, because while Bill said, he looked up at him and he said, don't, don't, just don't wear that, you know, don't show off, don't brag about it great, you've got my pocket watch, fine. But if, if, you, if I see you wearing it, something's going to happen. And of course, Davis is like, screw you, I'm, uh, I'm gonna do what I want. You know, it was like insult. And, and that, that pocket watch was very sentimental to Wild Bill and so it was, it was definitely an insult. But Davis was like, you know, everybody's, everybody's sitting around there and it's like, oh, everybody heard Wild Bill say that to him. So it's like, if he didn't meet the challenge, you know, he would look like a coward. So it was a 26-year-old's ego, a 28-year-old's ego, and trouble was about to spill over the next day. Because the next day on July 21st, throughout the day, Davis was walking around town in the square, showing off the watch, they're laughing, ha ha ha, look what I got. Wild Bill's not so tough. And he was showing it off. Now Hickok approached because some of Davis's friends apparently were goading him. And they all they met in the square. There's a square here that's still here. It's all different now, but the, the, the places are marked. And while Bill was, I say it was 75 yards away, there were Davis was by the, the courthouse, he's arched big building. He's right in front of the steps there. And they're 75 yards apart because people there, there were a lot of eyewitnesses. It was kind of like the, the playground fight was brewing. Everybody gathered around. So they had the exact 75 yards a long way and they're yelling at each other. It's like wearing that watch. 
and they both kind of stood sideways like this and Davis reached behind his belt and he pulled out his gun and he went like that and in a snap while Bill drew his gun second and they both shot at the same time and they were standing sideways well Davis's shot went high but Wild Bill's hit its mark and it not only hit its mark but it went in the side rib cage, fifth rib of his right side which is the side that was facing Wild Bill and it came out came out the other side and it's basically what happened was Davis Tut course he knew he was hit and it's it's so interesting in those days that the last words these these they, they really say the weirdest things but he he kind of was hit he started to fall backwards he was walking to the steps of the courthouse and he said boys I'm killed and then he collapsed that shot went not only through his ribs it went through his heart they autopsied him afterwards an unbelievable shot now, I'm going to tell you something. I have a lot of experience with rifles and handguns, target shooting, I ultra, preci ultra precision, long distance shooting, and I, I, I'm going to just tell you, and then with handguns, pistols, you know, rifles are designed to be shot at long distances. And you can get, you can hit a dime at 100 yards or a quarter, I guess a dime with the scope, but with a pistol, you know, I'm going to tell you that this large monument right in front of me is about 10 yards, okay? And 10 to 15 yards is kind of the effective, effective accuracy, good accuracy distance of a good shooter with a pistol. And remember, considering that you're not standing there for an hour and aiming. I mean, you're, you're drawing and you're shooting. So if you can hit a torso, you know, a lot of these fights were in bars. Distance, the length of a bar. But 75 yards, 75 yards is where that garbage can is over there. Just to give you an idea, I'm going to zoom in on it. That's how far 75 yards is. You can shout. You'd have to, hey, Bill! That's how loud you have to. 75 yards is a long way. And I'm going to tell you something else. If these two guys had rifles shooting quickly, there's a decent chance they'd only hit each other half the time. But for Wild Bill to make a shot like that, I mean, there had to still be some luck involved, but it's... It's ridiculous. This guy was good. Especially when your life is on the line. Your adrenaline is pumping. Absolutely ridiculous shot. But after he made that shot, he was, he became famous. The dime novels picked it up. And so his legend went. They arrested him. Well, Bill, they said, well, that's murder. And they put him in jail. He bonded out for $2,000. On August 3rd that year, you know, a couple weeks later, he stood trial and he was found innocent. It was the unwritten law of the fair fight. Now, most people would have left. <laughs> I mean, there's friends there. You know what happened in Tombstone with the Earp clan sticking around. You get ambushed. Well, anyway, he ran for city marshal there here in Springfield, and he lost the election, so he finally did leave unscathed. And he ended up going to Fort Riley, Kansas. He ended up scouting for Armstrong Custer 
George Armstrong Custer, 7th Cavalry. He, he was Marshal of Hayes, Kansas. He, Abilene, I mean, you can go on and on and on. And then joining Buffalo Bill's circus, he hated that. He hated that. He, they said he hid behind the scenery. In one show, he shot the spotlight out when it focused on him. So they fired him after a few months, and he was good with that. Now, as many of you know, just to conclude the story of Wild Bill, his 30s, he may have had syphilis. He was a ladies' man, big time. His eyesight was failing, glaucoma, a common product of that disease. So he was kind of going downhill, and he was playing cards, you know, the famous hand, aces and eights. He did not have his, he had, did not have his back, he had his back to the front door, which was unusual. There's a billion excuse, uh, theories on why, but a coward came up behind him that had a beef behind him. Jack McCall shot him in the back of the head, killed him instantly. And McCall was hanged. And I'll just finish the story that, you know, aces and eights. There's even people that say it wasn't aces and eights. But anyway, what I found really interesting, I have to go to his grave someday. And if any of you watching this want to go and send me a picture or a little video, I'd post it. Because Jack McCall, they exhumed him a few months later, a few years later, because they were relocating the cemetery. And of course, they curiosity we have to open the coffin he still had the frayed hangman's no uh, hangman's noose around his neck oh man would I have loved to see that so anyway he was sent to eternity just like he did to Davis Tut and this is David Tut's grave right here and there are some other family members here so this stone on the left here, the granite stone, is a, I think this was installed in 91, 1991, not 1891. So some people probably got together here, Generous Hearts did this. But he didn't even have, it said that he did not even have a marked grave. This at the time here was, I guess, a pauper's area. I mean, this is a massive cemetery, so it looks like all the older tombstones are over this way. And that is kind of the main corner of the cemetery, right over there. So I guess this, at the time here, was the back of the cemetery. So he was unmarked up until recently. Uh, it says, born 1839 in Yellville, Arkansas, died July 21st, 1865, on the, public, on the public square, Springfield, Missouri. And then on the back, I saw an inscription just walking up. Let's see what that says. It says, Wild Bill Hickok lost a family pocket watch to Davis Tut during a card game. And he asked that it not be worn in public. Davis refused and was challenged to a gunfight. Davis lost his life during a face-to-face -face shootout with Wild Bill on the Springfield Public Square. Oh, here we go. It's dedicated. Dedicated in conjunction with Wild West Days, September 11th, 1991. Yeah, excuse me. I, it's very hard to read, so I'm kind of stuttering along there. But I did look at Find a Grave. I don't know who Davy F., son of Louisa. Maybe some of you can help with that. Born October 16th, 
1866, died August 11th, 1890. And then we have Emma. We have Emma Tut, February 18th, 1847, July 20th, 1922. So that seems like a generation after Davis and Lewis. Lewis was Davis's brother, I believe. Older brother, November 1st, 1827. Wow. That goes way back. He died January 13th, 1900. So he lived he lived a decent life. But Davis Tut picked the wrong man to mess with. And we have his picture. We have one picture of him. We all know. We all see. And he was a handsome he was a handsome guy. So was Wild Bill. Well, Davis Tut, rest in peace. And from Springfield, Missouri, I'm off to the next mission. Stay safe, everybody.